Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Treach. My name is Pastor Doug. It's my honor to welcome you to worship with us this morning. Today, we start a brand new worship series built all around the concept of new. Go figure. New. New. Well, we got a new year. How about a new you and a new me? Join us as Pastor Daniel invites us into thinking about what we need to uh, identify, change, start, stop. I can't wait to hear about it. How about you? This morning, while you're kind of getting settled in, I invite you to grab your phone or your laptop, however you're worshiping with us, and check in. You know, we got the app, Treach app. Go to that. Check in. Let us know who you are in these interesting COVID times. That's one of our ways to, to begin building a relationship with you. Nowadays, we all want a connection. Help us connect with you. Now join me as we go to God and worship. Let's worship. Wow, what a week. Where do we even begin to, uh, to pray about everything? <laughs> state of the world, state of our heart, state of our country. It's a humbling moment. Um, I don't know about you, but one of the places I feel the most comfortable in prayer is at the altar realm. If you would oblige me, we're going to do the prayer there this morning. Uh, so wherever you are, if you feel like kneeling, kneel with me. Um, I just simply invite you to, to join me. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy God, it is hard at times to even breathe right now with the magnitude of the events of our world and especially of our country. So we pause this morning, God, to, to just be reminded of the truth that we know, that you are ever-present, that nothing can or will ever separate us from your love, that you are present in the midst of uh, big moments and little moments of heartache and of joy. For that, we give you thanks. We pray this morning, God, for um, holy wisdom, wisdom that is grounded in, in you and the tenets of your love and mercy, compassion and grace. We pray that this holy wisdom, God, will come upon literally everybody, those in our nation's capital making decisions, whether they are in power or not in power or feeling powerless. God, we ask for protection and wise counsel that everyone can take a deep, deep breath and go back to that which we know to be true, that we are invited to love you and to, to love our neighbor. In the midst of that tumult, God, we also remember just our sweet neighbors who are hurting. Remember those who are uh, facing loss uh, of all sorts, loss of health, loss of life, loss of income, loss of vitality, and maybe even loss of hope. Help us, oh God, to feel your presence, to be standard bearers, to be messengers of hope. Help me and help us this very day to go out to do something on purpose, to share your love and your hope, your goodness and grace. For it is only through that goodness and grace of God that there is hope. Thank you, God, that you love us and you walk with us, all of us, all the time. Hey, everybody. I'm Nick McRae, the Associate Pastor of Serving Ministries here at Treach. And I want to thank you for your generous hearts and for your passion for seeing the world transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. This Christmas Eve, we partnered with Refuge for Women to bring uh, hope and, and healing and a chance for a new beginning to victims of sexual exploitation and human trafficking here in Denton County. We were especially excited to help them expand their Survivor Made workshop and through that to expand the career development opportunities available to women in the program. And it's my joy to tell you that through your generosity, this church will be able to bless Refuge with more than $25,000 in financial support in Jesus' name. 
That, that number represents 25% uh, of our Christmas Eve offering, as well as a few extra gifts towards some special needs at Refuge's residential facility. So in a year when it would have been so easy to justify being less generous, Treach, you became even more generous. Thank you, friends, and may all glory be to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Con to continue to support the work of Treach in the community, you may give at any time by texting TMUMC to 45777 or by visiting us online at tmumc.org slash give. You are holy, great and mighty, the moon and the stars declare who you are and I'm so unworthy but still you love me forever my
Well, hey friends, great to be back with you. Uh, Pastor Daniel here in the comfort of my own home. As you can tell, uh, I've been away for a while because of COVID and so I'm grateful uh, for your prayers, grateful for the way you've been uh, holding me in prayer and just so grateful for Pastor Nick and the wonderful way that he helped step in and fill in the gap and certainly all of our media and worship team, how they've done a phenomenal job. I'm just grateful to be back with you and look forward to being in the regular uh, worship services on Sunday and in the weeks that lie ahead. Uh, it is indeed a new year and a new opportunity, and I'm very excited about this new worship series simply called New. Let me just remind you again that uh, we'd love to know you're with us, so be sure to check in uh, on the church app. Just download it in the Google Play Store or the Apple app. Uh, a store as well. It's a great way for us to connect with you. It also has, of course, ways for you to have message notes. Uh, I'll be referring to that uh, during the message today. There's ways for you to not only check in, but to engage scripture and certainly to make donations if you'd so choose. So I do hope that you'll check in and offer us that great opportunity. Well, what a unique time we're in, isn't it? I mean, not only is it unique here in terms of what I'm doing and sharing with you, but man, these days are so strange. And I know the events of this past week in our nation have just shaken us, and it just reminds us of how much we want stuff to be new, how much we want things to be different. And if you're like me, you've been asking the question, golly, when and how can we ever get back to normal? How can we get back to normal? And when I reflect on that question, it's a normal, natural question because we just want things to be the way they were, don't we? We just want things to get back to normal. And yet, I, I ponder to myself if maybe that's not the best question to ask. I'm wondering if maybe the better question to ask is, how can we now move forward? How can we move into a new opportunity? How can we move forward with whatever God is doing? And that's what I want to spend not only today, but the next many weeks in our worship series called New, because I'm convinced that we need to simply move forward. Normal is nothing like it once was, but moving forward, that's always possible. And so uh, when we think in those terms, it helps me to better recognize that we want to answer that question as it reflects the church, as it reflects maybe your work, as it reflects your own community and relationships, and certainly as it reflects on who I am as a person and who you are as a person. And here's the good news. Man, our faith is wrapped up in newness. Our faith has ancient traditions that help guide us into all things new. I mean, even last week, uh, we learned uh, from uh, Pastor Nick that we can not only recite a Wesleyan covenant prayer, an ancient tool that reminds us that all things are new, but man, we participated with uh, these great rituals, these rich rituals of, of baptismal renewal and communion, and they claimed for us a way to move forward, a way to make all things new. But it doesn't just stop there. I mean, our faith going all the way into the Hebrew scriptures, I'm reminded of how the Israelites were moved out of slavery and bondage in Egypt into the promised land and the powerful ways that that remade who they were and made all things new for who they were as well. And then of course, we can't help but remember and reflect on our own Savior Jesus and how just in days gone by, we've celebrated His birth and how God made new all creation because of God stepping into the world through the birth of Jesus, but also how Jesus' death and resurrection make things new. So the good news is we can move forward, and the good news is we've got a gift in our scriptures and in our teachings and in our faithfulness that we can indeed make all things new. So there's this passage of scripture in the Gospel of John. In the third chapter, some of you may be familiar with it, it's an encounter that Jesus has with a man named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is going to help us to better understand how we can be made new and how we can step into and forward into the richness of what God has in store for us this year and in all the days to come. Listen for this passage in the first couple of verses of chapter 3. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. 
Now, this is a fascinating encounter that Nicodemus has with Jesus because Nicodemus, of course, is a Pharisee. He's not a believer in Jesus. And yet he has this powerful encounter that clearly something within him is welling up for him to want to have this conversation with Jesus and want to know that there's something possible for the future. And so Jesus gives it to him. And, and I love how Jesus starts that conversation in terms of newness. He says, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born from above. Now, this uh, translation is interesting because some of us may know that verse as being born again. And here's the deal. In your app notes, you'll see this. The Greek word there is anothen. Anothen is a powerful word that clearly can mean born again, but it can also mean, as it does here in the New Revised Standard, can mean born anew or born from above. And all Jesus means in this anothen is that we have the capacity to be made new. We have the capacity to be made over. And Jesus brings that opportunity to us and he's helping Nicodemus to see it and he's helping you and me to see it. He says to Nicodemus, you must be born anothen. In other words, you can't just uh, try it on your own. You can't just get there by your own doing. This is something that Jesus offers. And of course, he would go on to remind not only Nicodemus, but you and me, that God so loved the world that he gave this child himself in order that we might have and know this newness. And so a, a part of what Nicodemus is teaching us is that we can be made new. And the best way for that to happen is to rely on Jesus, to be in a relationship with him. And therefore, we can be born anothen, from above, born again, born anew. So here's what Nicodemus, I think, is saying to us without saying a word. It's a fascinating lesson. And look, what I'm going to share, it'll be there on the screen. It'll be in your app notes as well. It's nothing profound, and yet it's so simple and straightforward, it will hopefully make all the sense in the world. Nicodemus is made over through Jesus. He's made anew. He's born again and born from above because he desires that relationship and Christ makes it possible for him. But here's what Nicodemus is teaching us. Watch. You can't do things new while doing old stuff. Isn't that silly? I mean, that's as straightforward as it comes. You can't do something new while still doing old stuff. And I think to myself, <laughs> that's nothing profound. I mean, any of us could say that, but the reality is we often all get caught up in this reality of just keeping doing the same old thing and trying it in different ways or trying it in, in somehow a, a, a way we hadn't thought before, but it's still the old stuff. You see, Nicodemus reminds us we can't do new things while still doing the old. It's why over the next several weeks, we're gonna spend a great amount of time with some very practical and relevant tools for you, for me, for all of us to become new and to step in this anothen, this opportunity that all things can be new and we actually can move forward. But in order for us to do that, we're gonna, we're gonna have to overcome a few, what I just call myths. And, and look, what I'm about to share with you, it's not original with me. There are many leaders, many pastors who've shared these concepts before, but I think they're so terribly helpful to us to be born anothen, to be born anew, if we'll just put those myths behind us. So the first myth I think we need to kind of debunk and, and get over is what I simply call the experience myth. There in your app notes, it'll be there. The experience myth goes something like this. I'll have been there, done that, and therefore I got it all figured out, right? I've had that experience, I've done that thing, and therefore I, I'm not gonna make that same mistake or I'm not gonna have that same problem. And while clearly experience is one of life's better teachers, the reality is we all know people, maybe even ourselves, who've been in bad relationship after bad relationship. Their experience never seems to change, right? Or we know these people who sometimes have this cloud that just hovers over them. And no matter how many times they've been through this experience or done that same thing, they just keep reliving the same experience over and over again. It's the experience myth that somehow seems to say, well, surely if I've done that, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. Or surely if I've been through that, that's not going to happen to me again. But we witness it all the time in people. That's a myth that experience in and of itself 
will help things become better. Here's a better way, I think, to think that through. Evaluated experience helps make us wiser. In other words, when I reflect on my experience, when I think it through, when I um, kind of consider, golly, could I do this better or different? The experience has the opportunity to teach me, to help me grow, but it's only a myth unless I choose to reflect on it, to evaluate it. This is what Nicodemus does. Several times in John chapter three, Nicodemus will ask questions of Jesus about what does it mean to be born in Nothan? What does it mean for this to happen? In verse nine of chapter three, in fact, Nicodemus literally just says, how can this be? He's evaluating, he's reflecting on the experience. So my first challenge to us as we step into the new year is to begin to intentionally evaluate your life's experience. Life's experience is so rich, it's so amazing, but just to have it, just to go through it, doesn't mean anything. On the other hand, if I will evaluate it and do something about it, then I can become wiser and I can begin to change the things that surround me. That's the first myth. The second myth I think we need to get over is what I simply refer to as the no better myth. And the no better myth sounds something like this. It's there in your app notes. Um, uh, if I know better, I'll do better, right? I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. If I know more, if I have more wisdom, if I have more insight, then clearly I will do better because I've learned, right? Well, clearly that can be true. But it's not always true. And it, it starts sometimes in the tweener years or maybe in adolescence. And my hunch is if you've got kids, or certainly if you've been a teenager, you've had this conversation either with your parents or as a parent. It goes something like this. You're, you're trying to communicate with your teenager or your tweenager, tweenager or, and, or you're trying to help them understand something. And as you're explaining or talking, they finally say something like this. I know, Dad, I know. You had that conversation? And, and then if you are like me, you've responded back to your adolescent. Um, if you knew better, why didn't you do it? I bet you've had that conversation, haven't you? Well, uh, to all of our adolescent friends, I say this. That's when that kind of conversation begins but it continues throughout all of adulthood that we seem to believe that simply because I know this thing or know about this thing, that somehow I'm gonna do better. Let me ask you a question. Do you know that you're supposed to eat seven or eight fruits and vegetables a day? Do you know that you're supposed to eat less salt and less sugar and less carbs? I, I do, I know that. <laughs> do I do it? No. Do I know that I'm supposed to exercise at least 30 minutes a day, at least three times a week? Do I know? I know that. Absolutely. Do I always do it? No, because it's a myth that simply because I know something, I'm going to do it, right? It's why resolutions don't always work for us. Uh, we, we make these resolutions at the beginning of the year because we know we want to get more svelte or we know that we want to be better people. We know this. We make a commitment called a resolution. And then of course, within two to five to 10 days, we've gone a completely other direction because simply to know doesn't solve the issue, you see. Here's perhaps a better way to understand that myth or to live into it. Changing behavior, not insight, causes movement. You see, it's not just about the intellect, it's not just about knowing, but if I change my behavior, rather than just what I know, then I begin to move a little. I begin to do something about it, you see. This is what Nicodemus did. Look, we don't know a heck of a lot about Nicodemus. There are only two other times, only in the Gospel of John, that we know about Nicodemus. But the next time we hear about him is in chapter seven of the Gospel of John. And he chooses to change his behavior rather than simply to know. There's this interaction between Jesus and some folks and they literally wanna put Jesus on trial. We know that. And at one point in the conversation, they're literally trying to throw him to the wolves, if you will, and Nicodemus is there. And we're told in chapter seven, verse 50, that Nicodemus not only steps up, but Nicodemus says quite publicly, isn't it illegal to cause someone to be convicted without a hearing? Is that a legal thing, he asks. And what it suggests to me is, 
Nicodemus knew that he might get in trouble for saying that. Nicodemus knew that other Pharisees would look down on him because of that. Nicodemus knew that he was bound to get flack over saying something. But he chose to change his behavior so that he could become new. He could be born anothen. He chose changed behavior, not just insight. You see, that's a myth. Here's the last myth I want us to consider that we need to debunk so that we can be made new. The last myth is this. I call it the inevitability myth. And that myth simply says something like this, as your app notes tell you. Um, Golly, life just comes at you, and this is just the way it is, and therefore I'm just going to accept it. It's just inevitable. Friends, life does come at us. There's all kinds of stuff that happens that we don't really have a lot of control over. That's true. I mean, we have obligations. Some of us have family. Some of us have work obligations and work responsibilities that just seem to flow right at us. And we feel often, by golly, that's just the way it is. I can't do anything about that. I just have to live with it or I just have to accept that. And I want to suggest that's a myth. Clearly, there are things that just fly right in our face, and we have very little control over it. But here's what I want to suggest. In order to be made new, check this out there in your notes. Um, For us to be made new, you have a choice and you have control over decisions that impact you. You have control over decisions that impact you. Yes, there are things that you have no control over, but the way you respond to them and the way you allow them to impact you, you've got control over that. You can make a difference with regard to that. You don't have to just let it become inevitable that you will be drowned in this or overwhelmed by that. Watch what Nicodemus does. In the very end of the Gospel of John in the 19th chapter, Jesus is crucified. There's nothing Nicodemus could have done about that. But in chapter 19, we're told that Nicodemus shows up and he brings myrrh and aloe to embalm Jesus. In fact, he brings a hundred pounds worth of it because he couldn't have done anything about the crucifixion. But he could choose to control how he responded to it and how he helped Jesus overcome the problem. You see, friends, Nicodemus chose to be born anothen to be made new, to be made over, to be born again. And I want to suggest that every last one of us can have that same gift, that it is the possibility of the birth, the teachings, the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes that possible. Jesus helped Nicodemus discover that, as John's gospel tells us. So Nicodemus debunked all of the myths, life's experience, the no better myth, and the inevitability. And so friends, I'm very excited that not only will Nicodemus help us better know how to be born anothen, again, from above or anew, but over the next several weeks, I'm going to invite you to be asking yourself these questions, and we're going to address them in very practical ways over the next three weeks. What is it you need to stop doing in order to be born anothen? What is it you need to change in your life in order to be born anothen? What is it you need to start doing in order to be born anothen? Friends, we can do all of these things. They're within our grasp and it's possible because Jesus knows that it's true. And if we'll simply relate to him, he will make it possible. I pray for you and for me that we will indeed be made new through our relationship with Jesus and that he will offer all things new for us in the days that lie ahead. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you for the great and practical lesson from Nicodemus that we can indeed be born anothen, that our lives can be made new, that our hearts can be made new, that our circumstances can be made new. God, we want to move forward. We want to be different. And we certainly want to be new. So I give you thanks that Jesus Christ makes all things new and we can indeed be born anothen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Hey friends, let me just tell you how grateful I am. You, you certainly ended 2020 so generously and financially well, and I look forward to the ways you will continue to make that possible in this new year. You really are making ministry possible. You can go to tmumc.org slash give, or you can text the letters TMUMC to the number 45777, where you can make a direct donation there. Thanks so much for all you're doing to make ministry possible. Can't go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? As I walk now through the valley Let your love rise above every fear Like the sun shaping the shadow In my weakness your glory appears
I love that music. There's nothing quite like music for the soul as we begin this new year. Well, friends, thanks again for being with us this week. Thanks for joining me in my home, and I look forward to being with you soon. Friends, these days are exciting because Christ is making all things new. I invite you to consider what you're going to stop, what you're going to change, and what you're going to start so that we can be born a nothin and we can celebrate all things new that God has in store for us. Hey, hang out for a couple of more minutes. We've got some great words for you as we begin this new year. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bill, uh, Bill Malden, excuse me, Bill, what are you doing? Steps, gotta get my steps. It's my New Year's resolution, get more exercise. I see, that's great. Uh, Wait, slow down, please, just, Steps. Bill. No, Gotta give a step. That's great, but... No, but no, I can but... tell you about another great step. Steps. Next Steps membership class. If you want to know about joining the church or just more about us, we'd love to have you join us. January 17th at 11 a.m. It'll be on Zoom. Love to have you join us. Steps. That's cool. Steps. Where can we go for more information yeah. or to register? I just, can, can you just put it on the screen? I just... Woo. Sure. Woo. We can do that. For more information, Go to tmumc.org slash next steps. Bill, this is great. It's always great to improve your health and exercise, but have you thought about improving your spiritual health as well? What? You can take a spiritual health checkup online. It will examine seven key points to help you assess better what your spiritual health is. Cool. Where do I go for more info? (laughs) That's easy. You can take it at any time at tmumc.org slash health check. I got to find something to do sitting down. What about a Bible study? You know, that sounds great. I saw that we're about to start a bunch of new ones. They're going to be online and it'd be great to have some fun and do something that can help me grow in my spiritual health. Could you put up some information about it for everybody? <laughs> sure. More information about all of our studies, classes, and resources, go to tmumc.org slash studies. Oh, thank you for worshiping with us. For more information, go to our website at tmumc.org. Oh, oh it's so nice. Steps, 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 steps.